Okay, this is a short video to show you how to, uh, how to solve certain support force problems using moments. And this is one of my favourite uses of moments. I find it uh, absolutely amazing. It's brilliant. So, let's imagine that we've just built a bridge. This is a bridge uh, over a river. Uh, and the bridge is supported at either end by these two triangles. Um, and a person is walking across the bridge. Um, if that person weighs, let's say, 800 newtons, uh, what will the support force be from the two ends of the bridge? So clearly if the person's weight is acting downwards, there must be some uh, other force acting upwards on the person from the bridge, and ultimately that force is going to come from these two supports here. What are the forces from each of these bridge supports? Are they equal? Are they different? Uh, what on earth could they be? For the moment we will ignore the weight of the bridge itself which is a pretty ridiculous assumption to make but it will make the calculations just a tiny bit easier. Then in a second we can introduce the weight of the bridge as well um, and you'll see that it's actually not that much more difficult. So, um, what, are the, what are the upwards forces on the bridge going to be uh, when the person is on the bridge? Well, we need to know a couple of minor details like how big the bridge is and where the person is. So let's say the whole bridge is 5 metres long and let's say the bridge, uh, the person is 1 metre from the end or something. Now, I've told you we're going to solve this using moments. Um, and you might be asking yourself, well, if we're doing moments, then where's the pivot? Allow me to just delete the river, because it's in the way. Uh, it turns out, in moments problems, you can take the pivot to be essentially wherever you want. You can consider any point to be a pivot. And in reality, any point could indeed be a pivot. I mean, if we got rid of this bridge support here, we could imagine that the whole bridge would pivot about this point. So we could consider that to be a pivot. Likewise we could consider this point to be a pivot. We could even consider this point to be a pivot, or this point. We can actually consider any point on the bridge to be a pivot. It doesn't matter. But uh, it turns out there's certain positions that are going to be useful for you. Um, now, the thing is, we've got these two forces that we want to know. I'm going to call this one S1, support force 1. We'll call this S2, support force 2. Now, these are both unknown forces. Um, and if we're going to use moments uh, to try and solve this, then we might be able to come up with a cunning way of at least eliminating one of these forces so that we can find an answer. If we take moments about this point here, hopefully you'll see that the moment due to this force is zero because it's acting straight through that point. The force is acting straight through that point. There is going to be a moment, a turning effect from this force, a clockwise moment. There is going to be a moment from this force, uh, an anti-clockwise moment. And in fact, that's enough for us to uh, to come up with it with an equation. So, if we call this like support one and this support two, if we take moments about the tip of support one. We have a clockwise moment coming from the weight of the person, 800 newtons times 1 meter equals 800 newton meters. We have an anti-clockwise moment coming from this support force, which we will just simply call S2 times the distance 5 meters away from uh, the point we're taking moments about. And because the bridge is balanced, uh, we can equate these. So 5s2 equals 800. Therefore, s2 is 800 divided by 5, which should work out to be, if my maths is correct, 160 newtons. So we've worked out that S2, be very careful here, we've worked out S2 is 160 newtons. 
Now we can work out what S1 is. Now there's two different ways of working out what S1 is. Firstly, you could just consider forces. Okay, If there is 800 newtons acting downwards on the bridge, uh, then there must be a total of 800 newtons acting upwards on the bridge, otherwise the bridge would, would not be in equilibrium. So in that sense, we could just say that S1, by a process of deduction or on that basis, must be 640 newtons so that 640 newtons plus 160 newtons the total upwards force equals 800 newtons the total downwards force okay that's one way of doing it or we could just repeat the moments process uh, the other way around and maybe we'll do that just for practice so now if we take moments about support point two moments about two just for some practice okay so now let's take the pivot we're putting the pivot here okay now the weight of the person is a uh, causing an anti-clockwise moment that's going to be 800 newtons times four meters which would be what would that be three two zero zero newton meters there's a clockwise moment from S1, which is going to be S1 times 5 meters. We've got the same thing again. 3, 200 equals 5 S1. So S1 equals 3, 200 over 5, which equals hopefully 640 newtons, which I think is what we said before. So once you've found one of the moments, you can then work out the other <coughs> sorry, once you've found one of the support forces, you can then work out the other one by whatever method you see fit. Notice, and this is something that people get mixed up all the time, when we took moments about the first uh, support here, we eliminated that support and we ended up calculating uh, the second one. Okay? So when you take moments about this one, you end up calculating this one. Don't get it mixed up. Then when we took moments about this point, we ended up working out this support force here. So uh, don't get that mixed up, uh, I would say. Uh, it's then not rocket science to introduce the weight of the bridge itself. Okay, it just adds an extra little line into your calculations. Okay, so now let's say that the bridge itself also has uh, a weight and we'll say that the bridge is heavier than the person let's say it is a thousand newtons or something like that and we'll keep our person with their weight of 800 newtons uh, it turns out it's absolutely no different to calculate the two support forces we'll just call this S1 and this S2 and then you just go through the whole process again we could take moments about our support one moments about one okay now clockwise we've just got two uh, forces we'll keep that one meter now we've got 800 newtons times one meter plus now we're including the weight of the, the the bridge itself now if the bridge is still five meters long that's going to be the center of mass is going to be 2.5 meters away so now we've got a thousand newtons times 2.5 meters so that's going to be 800 plus 2500 which equals hopefully 3300 Newton meters. Then the problem proceeds as normal. Okay, you just have to remember that your total clockwise moment uh, it now has two contributing factors: the weight of the person, the weight of the bridge itself. We could add more objects. Okay, we could put a car on the bridge, and it doesn't actually make it. Sorry about the terrible car. It doesn't actually make the problem any more difficult. Okay, and it just means we've got another weight, which would add another moment. But it, there's no additional complexity to the problem. So I find it quite amazing that just by using moments and taking uh, taking moments about a sensible point, you can work out the, the force of bridge supports 
um, with any number of objects on the bridge uh, without too much difficulty. So I hope that's explained it a little bit to you. Ultimately, you just need to practice this quite a lot and get used to, you know, when you take moments about one point, you end up working out the force from the other point. Uh, but with a bit of practice, you should get on top of it quite easily, I hope.